Welcome to the Tile News and SNEC Solar Leadership Conversations. My name is Michael Schmela. I'm the Managing Director of Tile News and I'm very happy to have with us uh, Li Jung Guo, President of Longi Solar. Ha, nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. Thanks for taking the time. It's a busy show. Um, just um, a quick overview from you on, on the market dynamics. Um, so the, the market numbers for the first month were very promising. So China installed almost 50 gigawatts in the first four months. And we also hear very good news from many mar other markets around the world. Analysts believe that the market could grow to around 350 gigawatts from 250 gigawatts last year, but we don't know. I think um, it always feels that every month uh, the numbers are getting higher. So what are your expectations um, for the solar market this year? Uh, 我认为它是有几个原因。第一个原因呢是这个在过去碳中和的共识的一个推动下面。Okay, I think first of all, in the past two years, the growth in this market definitely went beyond our expectation. And I believe the carbon neutrality was one of the strong drivers behind global markets for that. Especially in 2022, when India was about to release their tariff policy in Q1, uh, many clients in India were rushed to buy a lot of modules before the policy was issued. And also in Q2, we had the uh, the uh, conflict between Russia and uh, Ukraine and a lot of European clients wanted to get more before that. So there was a lot of need in 2022 beyond people's expectations leading to a shortage for the supply chains and driving the costs of the monocrystal silicons. But the needs for China last year was kind of suppressed because of the rising module prices. Uh, but this year, the need started to be released. That's why we saw a huge surge uh, in the first uh, four months for the installed capacity. And uh, uh, especially a lot of power stations started to resume work this year. In general, um, I think we're quite uh, uh, pessimistic about this year's turnover um, in, in total. And last year, we concluded with 300 gigawatts of installed capacity. And this year, I'm quite sure the number will go beyond 400 gigawatts. Uh, but uh, beyond 2023, I mean, after this year, the markets um, will continue to grow globally, but uh, the speed will tend to slow down. Of course, uh, driven by carbon neutrality and energy sector transformation is still going on. Um, it will grow, but the speed will tend to be slower than before. But don't you think that because of energy security concerns, because I believe this is new when we talk about solar um, because in the past it was mostly because of carbon neutrality environmental reasons and now solar is also considered by many countries a way to to get more more independent um, and I think this is probably a driver that many many analysts didn't have on their agenda and um, and don't you think that this will also drive a demand also in the next few years beyond expectations even of course if it is not as big as from 2022 to 2023 uh, 它的基数不一样了,你比如像这个2021年我们从150个GW的这种水平 so I agree with you, energy security can be one of the driving uh, sources behind this, but let's take, uh, uh, let's look at the numbers. In 2022, we grew from about 100 to 150 gigawatts, and the growth rate was uh, 50 to 60 percent, and that percentage maintained till now, because uh, last year it was also 50 to 60 percent of the growth rate, and this year, if we reached 400 gigawatts, 
from 300 gigawatts was also about 40 to 50, almost half of the growth rate. But if we continue to grow, which we will, from 400 gigawatts to, say, if we can add um, 100 gigawatts um, annually from, from this year, it's still it's going to be about 25% if we follow that, that logic. So it will still grow, but the ratio will tend to slow, out, slow down because of the number is getting bigger and bigger. Sure, but um, so according, I think if we look long term, according to learning curve, we should be still reach uh, above the terawatt level before 2030. Um, so when, when do you expect that the terawatt level will be reached? Um, and how, how is first Longji preparing for that? Strong growth. And second, what do you think needs to happen um, on, the, um, on the framework conditions um, in order that the industry can deliver that. So, because it's one side what the industry can do, but it's on the other side um, what regulators, governments in the world have to do so that we as the industry can do our job. Uh, and thank you for question. I think, of course, the terawatt level is a must because we only need to we need to reach that scale first to be uh, supportive for carbon neutrality. So it's a must. We will reach that by 2030, but I, I can't tell you which yet because I don't know. And also for our company, uh, we set goals to cope with that uh, massive amount, and our goal is to have about 25 to 30 percent of the module market share globally and that is one of our goals. We also need to cope with uh, geopolitical tensions and trade protectionism of course in the future. That's why we're, uh, we are about to migrate our capacity outside China. Like right now we have plants in Malaysia and Vietnam and also we are working with our partner in the US to build a 5 uh, gigawatt module plant in the US. It's, it's um, in progress. We'll also, uh, trying to scout more sites in Middle East, Europe and other markets uh, based on the local policies and other resources. And also another thing I want to mention is uh, in order for our company Longji to maintain our market edge, we we'll also need to continue investing in R&D to further improve uh, the cell conversion rate and also to drive down the costs. We want people to use clean energy at minimal costs. That is also one of our missions and responsibilities. So with technologies and with innovation, I believe we're able to realize our goals and also to fulfill our overseas strategy. Maybe one final question. Um, so um, some people might not know, and, and I was also surprised when I read, read about that, that Longji is the largest producer of electrolyzers uh, in the world uh, these days. Uh, so that means you started as a solar company, you started in wafers originally, became vertically integrated. So. Um, how how will so Longji look in five years as a company? Um, solar is uh, as a technology also uh, changing. We 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 are in the center of this whole energy universe. Solar will be the most important uh, energy provider, and we are also very important for electrifying heat, solar and heat pumps, solar and batteries. So. Uh, what does that mean for for Longji as an original solar company? Um如果说五年的时间来讲的话,龙基当然还是在光伏行业里面,光伏仍然是龙基这个最主要的一个业务,而且未来五年我们也相信光伏还是有快速的一个成长在这个里面。那么龙基之所以介入到氢能,是我
Um, if you ask me about the five years of time uh, spent in future, I'd like to say solar will remain our dominant uh, business pillar. I mean, I think this industry will keep, to grow, will keep growing in the five years to come. Uh, but the reason why we foray into hydrogen is that we believe green hydrogen and green electricity will be an important part for future energy structure. Um, of course, in the five future five years to come, solar will remain will be our main business pillar, but we will keep incubating hydrogen. And I, I believe if we look at ten years to come, uh, maybe hydrogen will become our second important growth pillar. Because after ten years the growth potential of solar related businesses will start to slow down. Well as hydrogen will be the next fast growing track, I think. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much.